I'm delighted to be joined today by John Neal, who's Chief Executive of Lloyds of London, the insurance market. John's been Chief Executive there for almost two years now, uh, during which time he's put out his blueprint, which is his view for the future of the market, and has also steered Lloyds through the challenges of the coronavirus crisis. John, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, John, perhaps we could start with coronavirus and, and the events of this year, and perhaps you could just tell us how the market has coped and how Lloyds has coped with the challenges that have been thrown up? Sure, Oliver. I mean, who, who'd think we'd be sat here in uh, uh, moving into October, uh, um, looking back as far as March when the crisis really hit us? We, we sort of went in two different directions, really. One was to ensure that we could uh, really look after our people well and actually repatriate the market from operating as a marketplace to working effectively from home, um, which, which we did do, and we did do well. The market's been incredibly efficient. Uh, and at the same time, just make sure that that our customers were getting their policies renewed and that they were getting their claims settled. So I think we've done a good job actually at both a people and a customer level. Um, from a claims point of view, it, it's been a, an incredible event, the like of which we've never seen. No one could have ever envisaged, if you like, the same loss occurring to everybody in the world at exactly the same time. So it's brought with it a whole set of new challenges, the like of which we've not seen before. And how have you managed in bringing the market back over the last few weeks? The, the underwriting room has been open for a few weeks now. How, how's that been going? Been interesting. I mean, one thing we were really determined to do was to take the opportunity to be different. As you know, we wanted to represent a much more digital um, impersonation of the marketplace. So what we did when the room was closed was we transformed it into both a, a real and digital workplace which allowed people to continue to operate virtually or to operate physically or to combine the two. So we were quite excited about reopening the room in early September and being able to connect the room actually instantly globally. So, and that's worked well, that's worked well and um, has been really um, thoroughly embraced by the market participants. And how does that fit into your, your blueprint that you launched last year, which was your plan to modernise Lloyds and create uh, new platforms for different ways of doing business? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, it, I mean, a digital marketplace is essentially premised on capturing very complete and accurate data at the point of transaction, i.e. just driving extreme efficiency and capability and making the you know, the, oper the operation of providing an insurance solution as instantaneous as you can. So, you know, there's a few things we've done this year by improving connectivity into the marketplace. In fact, actually half a million risks will be bound electronically this year. So really good progress on that. And the virtual room is just an extension of that capability. Hmm. What happens to, to the old traditional face-to-face -face way of doing business? Will that, will that survive? I think, Joe, I think it will actually, Oliver. We've thought about this quite a lot. And I think as people debate their real estate footprint in London, the value proposition of Lloyd actually goes up. It becomes a marketplace. It becomes somewhere where you can convene, where you can connect to initiate the discussion or maybe close the discussion. So I actually think the physical proposition actually goes up in value, not down. The reality is that we need the electronic capability for speed, for accuracy and for volume. How has, has the crisis affected the insurance market more broadly in terms of the kind of insurance is being so, that's being sold and the prices that are being charged for it? Yeah, it's, you know, it's been interesting. I've been thinking about this quite a lot actually through the crisis. And you know, we've talked before about the reality of the world becoming an intangible world rather than a tangible world. And if anything, the crisis has shown the lack of understanding of, of intangible um, assets and the ability to insure them. You know, so few people you and I have discussed before, where everyone talks about cyber insurance. I mean, outside the US, almost nobody buys the cover. Very few people buy IP insurance. Very few people protect their data. So I think it's, it's an opportunity for us to educate customers and also ensure that the products and services we've got really do match the expectations they've got going forwards. It's it's a different world. I think business needs are fundamentally different. And we need to take two steps back and make sure the products that we've got in the marketplace are relevant. Mm -hmm. We've been hearing a lot in the last few weeks about how prices for insurance are rising as insurance companies react to the volume of claims they've had to pay out this year. How do you see the market at the moment? Do you think prices will continue to rise for, for a while yet? 
I think they will. Um, you, you know, there's there's almost this contra cyclicality that exists with insurance and business. You know, when business is flying and riding high, insurance tends to be less in the mind of the customer. They retain more risk at a point where the world feels riskier then more insurance cover tends to be bought and actually prices go up. It's a weird contracyclicality. So I think you're going to see more products and services put to market. I, I think you're going to see customers buy more insurance. And the reality is, is we are looking at that period in the cycle where prices are going up. So, you know, on average, we've seen prices after adjusting for inflation. So if you inflate and then adjust, prices are up on average by about 10% this year. It's quite a big rise. Is that attracting more capital into the market from investors who want to, to back the, the new business? It, it definitely is, Oliver, it definitely is. You know, if you're an investor at the moment, where, where do you go? You know, risk-free rates globally are 35 bits. You know, we're probably going to go close to, if not into negative interest rate territory in the UK in 2021. So investors have got very, very few places to put their money. I think insurance actually, if you look out through 21, 22, 23, becomes quite an attractive proposition. So where where that steady, capable 10% return was looking unattractive a year or two ago, suddenly I think it's looking very attractive. So yes, we're seeing it. We're seeing it at Lloyd's. We're seeing a, a lot of interest for new businesses to be established. Mm -hmm. And are you giving approval for, for new businesses to come in? We're being selective, and as you'd expect us to be, as, as you know, we've, we've gone through a pretty tough time of really right-sizing performance. And you know, we believe that this year is, is the sort of culmination of three years' hard work to get the market to where it needs to be, and that is to be sustainable in terms of its profitability. So we've got to set the bar high. You know, having put that hard work in, we've got to be satisfied that someone coming in new adds value to the marketplace, adds value to the customer set. If they do, then yes, of course. If they don't, um, then then no. So it's a hard bar. It's a high bar, but yes, I'd expect to see growth in the market. So, you know, putting numbers on it, I think roughly the existing market will grow by about twelve or thirteen percent next year, and there could be another five or six percent of new entrants. So combined growth could be close to 20%, pretty significant. That's a that's a pretty hefty growth rate for for, for Lloyds of London. Um, I wanted to ask you, John, more broadly about the, the world of insurance, uh, and in particular about the Bermuda market, which has been yeah. a center of insurance for, for a number of decades now. How do you see the, the future for Bermuda and how will Bermuda be affected by what has happened this year? I think it's good. I mean, you know, Bermuda is the second largest insurance marketplace behind London. Um, I think it's really added value to the insurance marketplace. It's been it's been very tech savvy. It's been very intellectual in the way in which it's priced risk. It's been quite cat biased up until now. Um, so it's a big insurer of catastrophe risk, not so much for general. I think it has a role to play. I think you'll see some diversification in its product set. Um, and I think it's a marketplace that's here to stay. Um, it's been ahead of London in some instances. For example, index-linked securities, ILS Capital, has thrived in Bermuda. We've just approached the Treasury for permission for index-linked securities to operate at Lloyd's. That'll be a first in London. So that'll be us, I think, standing parapazoo with Bermuda. So B Bermuda and London, I think, can be complementary and can work together. There's a place for both of us. John, the last thing I wanted to ask you about was diversity. One of the, the things you've spoken a lot about is the need to improve diversity in Lloyds of London and in the London insurance market more broadly. Perhaps you can give us an update on how those efforts are going and whether you think the the crisis and the the, the phenomenon of more people working from home will, will change or help or even hinder those efforts. Yeah, of course. I think, and I have a slightly different view to most people, you know, change is premised by you wanting to make change happen. So, you know, when you look at the cultural challenges that have been discussed around the marketplace and people say that's generational change, I, I don't believe that. I think if you want to make the change, you can make it happen quickly. And, you know, we've moved quickly around challenges for gender, you know, within my own business, within the Lloyds Corporation team, where um, we're at parity in terms of our senior leadership, male and female. And boy, does that feel good. And does that make a huge difference in the way in which we think, act and behave? We've set targets for the market for the first time. Um, that's 35% by the end of 2023, parity within a decade. 
Now, some people would be disappointed with that. I'm mildly disappointed with it, candidly, but it's a good step and it's a positive step in the right direction. And of course, we've all faced the challenges that have been highlighted by Black Lives Matters, you know, you know, quite rightly putting into focus you know, the, the, the relatively low representation for black colleagues and colleagues from um, ethnic minorities. So, you know, we're capturing all the right data points on that and we will put in place targets for uh, black colleagues and, and colleagues from uh, ethnic minorities through the first half of 2021. It, it, to me, it's just so important that you represent broadly the customer set that you're dealing with and you are just so much better for the mix and the inclusion that you have with a very diverse workforce. So you, you have to get that right as much as you have to get performance right, as much as you have to get our blueprint and technology agenda right. You know, if you get if you get those two right, but fail culturally, then you'll fail overall. Well, John, that's all we have time for today. So thank you very much indeed for joining us. Oliver, lovely to speak to you.